Welcome to the EOB Podcast, where we talk about the weekend box office and the new openings this week. I'm Ben and joining me is Sen Dong. So Sen, welcome back to another podcast. Uh, thank you. Okay, so last week we have just one wide release and it was released on a Wednesday. And that is the fifth Transformers movie titled The Last Night. And I think it might be the, well, I don't know, um, things on... Well, things aren't looking that good for it. <laughs> right, so so we threw out some huge numbers. At least I threw out some huge numbers for the movie. And um, how about we get right to it? Okay. All right. So um, coming in number one uh, is Transformers the last night. It pulled in $45 million over the weekend, just three days. But it was released on a Wednesday. So you would say it, it pulled in uh, only $70 million. Over five days. Yeah, yeah, and, yeah. Over five days, and and it's you know it's by far the lowest uh, debut of the series. I had it at uh, what a hundred million for five days. Yes. And you had it at one thirty. <coughs> oh, something like that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I I was saying I think the drop off was a lot more than you know either of us had. Uh, Expect it because we, you know, uh, I, I was expecting a drop because, you know, even though every one of these Transformers films opened consistently at around 100 million for the three day weekend, the last one didn't held up as well as the other ones, you know, making like 100 million less than the one, the one before it, uh, domestically. Um, so I was thinking it's gotta be the bad word of mouth, it's gotta be franchise fatigue. You know, despite opening the, the previous one, Age of Extinction, despite opening at 100 million, like uh, all the previous films in the series, uh, it didn't make nearly as much uh, when it was all said and done in theaters. It, you know, it grows 100 million less than the previous film. So I'm, I'm, I was thinking that that's got to affect it. It's got to be the word of mouth, got to be sequel items, whatever it is, it's going to affect this film. And it affected a lot more than. Um, we, you know, I, I was expecting. Uh, yes, so you were correct in, in that this fifth, really fifth Transformer yeah. movie will dip. And even uh, by your standard, I mean, you know, you, you had it like 70 million for three days, 100 million five days. You know, you were, kind of, you know, pretty low on it. And, you know, I was high, but it's still, it's still underperformed by a lot. Yeah. And, um. Yeah, you know, like you said, it could be, you know, sequel fatigue. And it, it's kind of like that, uh, is it the fifth or fourth or fifth uh, Pirates movie? It's, it it kind of follow the same uh, plot line, right? Um, I, I'm not sure it follows the same plot line, but uh, this this one... No, not, they, not, not plot line, but, can, you know, kind of like oh, trend. Oh, you know, trend, it, it, yeah, it, it, follows it, it, the same Yeah, yeah, exactly. I mean, it, yeah. it's like, uh, you know, the last couple movies were like, you know, like one billion uh, worldwide, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You're yeah. pulling one billion worldwide. And, you know, we kind of, um, at least I kind of expect, hey, you know, it's going to probably do the same, even though domestically it's going to, you know, do worse. Mm-hmm. Right? My numbers were high because, you know, you know, you know me, I have always bet against uh, Michael Bay. But his movies always seem to prove me wrong. Right. And, you know, and his uh, fans. <laughs> yeah. Right. So I said, e- even uh, if it's front loaded, you know, his fans going to turn out for this one. But, you know, maybe it's by the fifth movie. Uh, they really have nowhere to go. And they try to make, you know, like the stories was never Transformers strong points. The movie. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and it was always the special effects. Maybe it's just that by the, this fifth movie, people were just like, OK, we're we've seen enough of these special effects and they're not that spectacular anymore. I uh, kind of like well, uh, what I'm saying with the privates of the Caribbean. Movies. Mm-hmm. You know, the special effects are not enough anymore. And, you know, story wise, they have nowhere else to go. And uh, in this one, they, they you know, kind of uh, make Optimus Prime the bad guy. He turned heel, uh, you know, when in the promos, you know, he's trying to kill uh, Bumblebee. Yeah, I think the, the problem with this one, I, I think if you read the reviews, um, it, it's exactly as they say. It's, you know, it's overstuffed and it's, well, you know, it's unfocused. It, had they just focused on that part, which is what the traders focus on is that, hey, Optimus Prime is a bad guy. Had they focused on that, the film would have been a lot better, even though, you know, Furious 8 has already done it by turning Dom into a, a bad guy. But the problem with Transformers, that's actually a really small part of the movie. Uh, Optimus Prime being the bad guy is actually like one-tenth or one, 
I don't know, maybe like uh, maybe one tenth is too too small, but it, it was only like one one fifth of what the whole film was about. Either they couldn't come up with uh, enough of a story or something else. They do in a lot of subplots to, to fill up the two and a half hours of the movie. Yeah, sure, but you know, it, it's just one of these where people are just not interested in watching this movie anymore. At least you know what what's uh, you know shown to them. You know, you know, Transformer is a brand that they would watch if they were like really interested in watching robots transform and explosions and everything, right? But yeah. this one, just people are just turning away from it. You know, it's it's one of those things where I think it's, it's just it was just too unfocused. Uh, you, you know, the, of the of all the other Transformers movies, this one felt the most like they they really made it as they went. Like they really just got everyone together <laughs> and without without even kneeling down and script. It was just like let's let's just make something, and you know all these ideas are thrown out, and they just kind of made it as they went, and then they're like, oh, you know, we got two and a half hours worth of film, let's cut it together, and it, it felt like that. Sure, that people were tired of it, but had they uh, just focused on one thing, I feel like it would have been a lot stronger movie, and it wouldn't have felt as uh, much of a cash grab. Like let's just throw a bunch of stuff together. And you know, reading some of the interviews, I get I got that point because Mark Wahlberg said most of the movie is in Michael Bay's head. Um, I heard similar <laughs> comments from people who have worked with Jackie Chan is that they they ask for a script but they never get the script and the stories in Jackie Chan's head. The thing with Jackie Chan movies is he make him he makes them as they go. There is no script. He has an idea that's in his head. He grabs a bunch of people together and he and he just film and it and uh, it sounds like that that's how Transformers was made that. You know, the whole story is in Michael Bay's head and he feeds people lines as, as he goes and there's no central storyline. It's just a, whatever happens to be in his head, he just threw it out there. If it was a bit more focused, it would have done better, but it was just all over the place. Okay, yeah, yeah, but that's after seeing the movie. But what I'm saying is before, you know, the excitement, people, if people are excited about, uh, you know, watching a Transformer movie, the excitement should show up on opening night, but it's not just not there, right? Because, like, people haven't seen the movie yet. They don't know uh, about the quality, you know, if they read reviews, you know, if at all, right? Right. right, right. Uh, unless they read reviews. But, but you know, this one, it's just, the, you know, the interest level just taper off, just fell off a cliff here, domestically at least. Right, right, right. right. Part of it is also the... Um, the way they try to sell it on the trailer is Optimus Prime being bad, but you know, Furious Eight fit into the into that uh, storyline. It's not a strong point anymore. It's not original anymore. It's like the second film that tried to do that. Nothing fresh or original to attract you know eyeballs other than fans who just want to see it out of completion. Exactly, like before, you know, when the Transformers movies come out, right? You know, wait, the robots are really, really detailed. Yeah. But that is not enough anymore. You know, it's the fifth movie. Well, the already. first film was, you know, the first one was surprisingly decent. I mean, it was actually around 60% on Rotten Tomatoes, which, you know, in relative terms for Michael Bay film is pretty high, 60%. <laughs> right. And so, yeah, so a lot of them, you know, it was better than people had expected. So they turned out for the second film, which ended up making even more than the first film. And then the third film, they rejiggerated a little bit. The third film had, I think, uh, was it the uh, Constructicons? I have no idea. I, I haven't yeah. really followed the Transformer movies, but... Yeah, okay. but yeah, I think, oh, you know, even the last film had, like, the hugely popular uh, uh, Dinobots. Dinobots. Yeah. yeah, yeah. This film, not so much. You no, know, they try to turn Optimus Prime bad, but, you know, like I said, it's not original anymore. There's nothing to draw anyone in. Maybe it's just like, as you say, that Michael Bay is just tired of this franchise, and... And uh, he just wants to, you know, just dump something out there. And, you know, my conspiracy theory is, is this is an out for him, you know? <laughs> this is an out for him. Uh, yeah. yeah, it's like, stop paying me more money. I don't want to do any more Transformer movies. Right. Well, apparently he, he said um, after the third one, he, he wasn't going to do any more of these films. But then he did uh, Transformers Y and uh, Universal Studios. And uh, that kind of we. uh we energized him and he didn't want other directors to mess it, to screw up the franchise. And that's why he returned <laughs> for the fourth and fifth one. Oh, sure, sure. I'm sure his, uh, the money that they wired him in his bank account uh, didn't play a role. Yeah, you're right, right. 
Yeah, yeah. So anyway, as we've seen with the Privates movie, it's it's really the fifth one. Yeah. The fatigue here. I think everyone just tired of this one. I mean, Michael Bay especially, right? They just yeah. they, they fail to come up with anything new to I, I guess rejuvenate it, throw more life into the, the series. And yeah. This is the one they quote unquote build as the last uh, Transformers movie by Michael Bay, and uh, you know. Yeah, they 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 try to make it seem like the last, but you know, after watching the movie, the, at the end of the movie, you know, it leads to another movie. It's like here's what's next. It wasn't. Oh like, yeah, this sure, is sure. It. But, I'm, but I'm saying yeah. it's yeah. I'm sure. I'm I'm saying Michael Bay as director. I think this is it for him. They're gonna try someone new. The marketing tried to also make it seem like it's the last Transformers movie. So. People can would watch out to see it, but like all the reviews of it, too, the film made it pretty obvious that there are more coming. Well, right, right, right. Sure, sure. <laughs> there, there will be more. I mean, hey, the budget is pretty high for this one, though. Two hundred and seventeen million. Yeah. Officially, right? So there's always more. But um, the overseas figures. Let me see. Has it come in yet? Yeah, yeah. It's pretty good. There's uh, almost two hundred million. One hundred and ninety-six million. Whoa. Okay. Million. Most of it uh, from China. China it grows like 120 or 130 million over the weekend. It made almost twice as much as what it did here in five days. All right, right, and the worldwide gross right now is 265 million. So, uh, really, it's off to a really good start overseas. Mm. Uh, but uh, you know, the, the domestic market, like a lot of these long-running franchises, are you know are starting to tapering off. Yeah, the only negative I see here. The overseas is it. Other than China, the other markets have also uh, saw uh, diminishing returns, like the U.S. This one will definitely not get to a billion, even if it, it does, you know, like 350 or whatever it is looking like it's going to do in China. The other markets seem like uh, it's not doing as well either, like the U.S. This one might have trouble making up, you know, getting to 700 million or 800 million. Okay. Yeah, if it doesn't get to 700 million, I don't think they'll make more of these. Or if they do make more of these, they'll slash the budget. Uh, yeah, well, they're going to slash the budget anyway because, you know, Michael Bay demand a, a huge budget. And mm-hmm. if they get a new director in it, uh, obviously he will get a lower budget to work with. Yeah. You know, if, I think if this does about 700 million or 800 million, you know, it still can justify a $200 million budget. If you make three times more than three times the budget, you're kind of worldwide. You're in pretty good hands. Yeah, yeah. And isn't the next movie uh, focused on Bumblebee though? Yeah, there, there's supposed to be a, supposed to be a Bumblebee spin-off. But as we can see, there's already franchise fatigue, and you know, it doesn't bode well for Bumblebee. <laughs> Right, right. Well, it it always you know it always depends on the budget, right? If they yeah. budget it modestly, right. uh, since it is focused on Bumblebee, they, it could rejuvenate the series a bit, get more interest in the Transformers movie if they could do it well, right? Yeah. It just this one has been overseen by Michael Bay for a long time, and I, I guess it just, it just has nowhere else to take this this uh, franchise. Yeah, right. And I yeah. think it's it's good for him to you know send this off to another person. Yeah. yeah. All right. How about we move on to number two? Okay, sure. Okay, it's uh, Cars 3. It dropped 53% uh, in the second weekend, uh, pulled in $25 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, domestic gross is uh, you know, roughly about $100 million, and worldwide it is at 141 Yeah, so for a Pixar movie, one of the lower debuts in a while. The hold is okay, but I don't think it's as good as previous uh, holds for Pixar films. Um, so we'll have to see how it does in the coming weeks, but uh, so far it doesn't look like this will get to 200 million domestically. We'll have to see how it does uh, overseas. Yeah, I mean this is following. You know, this is the sequel to Cars 2, which is regarded as the worst Pixar movie. Yeah. You know, worst Cars movie, even. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> even yeah. though there's only two at a point, and yeah. uh, Cars 2 affected the perception of Cars 3. You know, yeah. even though it's better reviewed than the second movie. Mm-hmm. Um, like I said previously, you know, besides the Toy Story movies, Pixar hasn't had a um, good record with uh, long-running f- franchises series. It's always like they go up to two, and by the third movie you know but the only toy story and cars have three movies to it yeah yeah them, right yeah so it's not but they, they, they haven't yeah they haven't have a, a a track record with movies beyond three i mean with the exception of toy story yeah well i mean there's only been two so far so i mean um cars is you know not the best film to make a sequel to because even the first car wasn't that well we thought it 
Monster was definitely it's easier to sequelize uh, because the first one was well revealed as you know about monsters in the in this world. Was caused the first one wasn't that well regarded. They made it only for merchandise, so <laughs> it's an advertisement for the toys. Yeah, yeah. It's not that Disney、uh, Pixar doesn't have a good track record with these. It's just that the sole reason for cause is merchandise.、It、wasn't because it was a great film. You know, in Pixar's、uh, library of films, right? When when you think about it, the movie always has to probably end in a race. It's kind of like with, with those teen movies; it always ends up at the prom. <laughs> This one always、yeah. has to end up in a race, and they try to do something different with the the second movie. Try to turn it into a spy thriller, right? But it, yeah, it, at some point, racing has to be involved. Yeah, you know, well, the second film, the, the, the second film, they turned it into a Michael Bay movie. Well, yeah, yeah, too. But what I'm saying is, with cars, the concept, you know, it always has to end up in its track, and they're racing, trying to, you know, photo finish, you know, at the end or something like that, you know, this dramatic finish. Right. I think it's limited in that way. So,、uh, yeah, as you say, it is hard to sequelize the concept. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. But you know, with this spinoff into planes, which did okay because of the modest budget, then again, this is all targeted towards.、Uh, Toys. As long as they keep on selling billions of dollars worth of merchandise, they might continue to keep on cranking these out. <laughs>、uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's it's financing the toys or financing the movies. Yeah, these movies are basically just marketing for the merchandise. Nothing more we can say about it. No,、yep, no. Then that means it's、uh, time to move on to number three. Uh, which is Wonder Woman. It continues to hold on well.、Uh, only a, about thirty nine percent drop off.、Uh, pulled in about roughly twenty five million. You know, about same as Cars three.、Uh, it might come in number two when it's said and done. You know, when the actual number figure comes in.、Mm. Right. So you know, right now the estimates are、uh, it and Cars three being you know neck and neck in the same number with the same number.、Mm-hmm. Uh, so the domestic gross for Wonder Woman is three hundred and eighteen million,、mm-hmm. and、uh, worldwide, let's see, it is at six hundred and fifty-two. I believe it crossed.、Uh, it made more domestic than Batman vs Superman, right? Uh, let's see.、Um, oh no, domestic is three thirty. No, not yet, not yet. Yeah, not yet. But it's going to. Yeah, it's going to. By next week, it'll it'll be more. Hmm. Let's see, Suicide Squad three twenty-five. So by next week, it'll be both of these films. Right, so it's going to let me see what the it's going to be the highest domestic DC movie, the new one out, out outside Nolan. Yeah, yep, yep. All right, there you go. You know, Wonder Woman,、uh, a movie I think I had low low expectation of, but it turned out to be the best. <laughs> yeah, yep. The surprise hit of the summer. Well, you know,、yeah. that 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 was Get Out, right? That was、yeah. Get Out, but yeah. This one,、uh, people had low expectation of, and I wouldn't say it's a surprise hit. It did, did way better than people expected to do. Yeah. And I guess people were, you know, optimistic about the DC universe, but it's just that it's Zack Snyder, the person to hit the franchise. Right. Yeah. It's the cinematic universe, and、uh, this movie just Wonder Woman just shows that, hmm, maybe not. Yeah. But also for you know DC, I mean, despite the the reviews. You know, not too bad. I mean, Man of Steel did about three hundred. Batman v Superman three thirty. Suicide Squad three twenty five. So, and now Wonder Woman, another film over three hundred million. So the brand is very strong. But hey, Wonder Woman has definitely、uh, become the、uh, the star of the brand right now. All right. So the next movie they're gonna make her、uh, at least Justice. It's too late for Justice League, but you know in subsequent films they're gonna push、uh, Ben Affleck aside and say, "Hey, you know Gal Gadot, you're <laughs> your、yeah. next."、Uh, she became the eye patch guy, essentially. Yeah. All right. Number four is the horror movie Forty Seven Meters Down. It、uh, held on quite well.、Uh, only about thirty four percent drop off.、Uh, pulled in about seven point four million of the weekend. Um. Uh. In two weeks, it pulled in about twenty four million. Yeah. Um. Compared to、uh, all the other films, uh, in the top ten is the one that held up the best. Even more surprisingly, you know, it's horror thriller, and usually those films. Drop by you know sixty to seventy percent on the second week, so this one is definitely、uh, having some very、really、good word of mouth to、uh, held up、uh, so well. And the reviews of fifty four percent, you know, for this genre is not bad.、Uh, yeah, perfect date movie. Yeah. <laughs> so you know, kind of a you know a, a modest hit、uh, so far. 
But yeah, I don't think the budget is that high for this movie, and and uh, you know it is kind of programming as the long. It's not exactly a, a horror movie, right? It's not a monsters or supernatural thing. It's just like uh, uh, sharks, yeah. and and those seems those movies seems to all always make an appearance uh, during the summer. Yeah. Okay, so uh, a modest, I guess, success uh, depending on the budget, right? Depending on the budget. Yeah, doing decent is. Okay, and moving on to number five, to a movie that opened well but experienced a huge drop off is uh, All Eyes on Me is the Tupac Shakur biopic. Mm -hmm. uh, it dropped about seventy eight percent. Like uh, like I said before, it's a hugely front loaded movie. It pulled in five point uh, eight million over the weekend. Uh, domestic gross in the second weekend is only uh, thirty eight million. Yeah, so you know this is not gonna be the you know uh, like that NWA movie. Mm -hmm. What's the title? That's straight out of Compton. Yeah, so this is not gonna be anywhere close to uh, straight out of Compton because of how front loaded it is. Um, so it they probably didn't spend that much money on this anyway. So it's gonna probably end up doing about fifty million. So not bad, but not not straight out of Compton good as it's you know first weekend was uh, leading to right especially biopics about rappers right i yeah. mean it's doing pretty good i mean uh, it opens so well but it looks like uh, no it's not gonna i mean it's, it's gonna be a profitable film it didn't turn out as huge as uh what the the first weekend was alluding to Oh, well, but we expected that, right? I, I, I made the comparison yeah. to uh, 1999's Notorious. Uh, it's another biopic about like Biggie, um, you know, another rapper uh, who got gunned down, kind of like Tupac. Yeah. I guess it's following uh, similar uh, trend lines. Okay, let's uh, move along to number six, The Mummy. Huge drop off, uh, nearly 60% in this third weekend, uh, put in about 5.8 million. So domestic gross is only uh, 68 million right now, and the worldwide figure is 342. Yeah, at a budget of uh, uh, 125, 125 million. Worldwide is you know is kind of solid. It's just domestically is kind of a disappointment. They'll probably still go through with the whole monsters uh, cinematic universe, but you know the audience is uh, overseas, not not domestic yeah so this is universal they're trying to if you haven't heard uh they're trying to create this uh dark universe series of movies which is kind of like you know they're trying to do what marvels and dc are doing with their their movie monsters you know with mummy you know dr jekyll and mr hyde <laughs> yeah and maybe even dracula right yeah so they're trying to somehow connect these movies together at some point and uh you know we have the dracula and toad uh, -huh. uh with uh, luke evans uh, we have now tom cruise you know mummy uh you know russell crowe yeah. so far both of them perform uh very similarly huge disappointment uh well not huge dracula and toad the budget was only 70 million and it made about 60 million or 65 million domestically but you know it did well overseas and just like this the the numbers are pretty similar, except this one is because of Tom Cruise is doing uh, even better overseas. The, the studio was probably hoping for better numbers, but the overseas is saving them right now. Well, you know what? Taken as a whole, it's actually doing better than I expected, mainly because of the overseas market. Yeah. I mean, the concept of these movie monsters together doesn't really work well. I mean, because it doesn't have the backstories. Uh, of them working together right and you have to work really hard to get people you know audience to buy in uh, yeah this uh, avenger like uh <laughs> series of movies with these monsters yeah i think the main thing is also they're not able to like with dracula and untold they try to turn dracula into a superhero and he has that feel um with the mummy they try to go with the same tone as dracula and Toad. And what made the Brendan Fraser Mummy series so successful was because it broke out, out of that tone. It was a, an action-adventure comedy. It was more Indiana Jones than, than horror. It was one of those films that had that white mix of, it was kind of a romance, it was kind of a, it was an action-adventure film, it was a comedy, and it all works. <laughs> it all works. It's a fun movie, right? Yeah, it's, it's a, a, fun, it's a movie. fun summer movie. And you know those movies uh, is gross, with the exception of the third one, over 200 million domestically, 
And when you compare to those numbers, the mummy, even with Tom Cruise, you know, is a huge disappointment domestically. But, you know, overseas is saving their ass, so I'm not sure. It's kind of one of those mixed, mixed results. Yeah, yeah. But considering, all things considered, it's doing pretty well, taken as a whole. I, I not not quite sure what to say about it. You know, the mummy is kind of a huge disappointment domestically. You know, overseas is making up for it, but Universal is probably they're probably not high fiving each other. It's more like, <laughs> you know, it's it's more like oh, thank goodness for overseas. Oh, we dodged one there. You know, it's not like away. You know. <laughs> Yeah, but they're going to continue to make these movies because of the overseas market and they're going to really focus on the overseas, right? Because right now these movies are proving that it's not working that well here. Yeah. But, uh, you know, the overseas take is giving them more runway to kind of pull everything together. And as we said, um, you know, they're going to probably con- uh, continue to throw stars at the- these movies. Now it's Tom Cruise. Who are they going to throw at it next, right? I mean, I mean, like, who hasn't been signed to, to one of these Marvels or DC movies? Yeah. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's one of those mixed things. Uh, I don't think they were that excited about it. <laughs> it's more like, oh, we dodged a bullet there. Thank goodness for you know China and foreign. But all things considered, like like I said, they still have time to uh, figure things out. Uh, yeah. Although so far it doesn't look like the domestic audience cares. Though. They might have to turn it another way. They're trying to turn these people into superheroes, and maybe that's the wrong that's the wrong strategy. Like. We already have enough superheroes. We we just want to see monsters. Maybe who knows? <laughs> maybe maybe you know you know what I want them to do. I I guess with Wonder Woman, right? We you know we have all these talk about female directors. Uh-huh. I just want Universal to kind of use this as a, hey, how would a female takes on on this movie would work out? Yeah, mm-hmm. you know, because these are all kind of more like for really male within that whatever demographic it is 18 to whatever you know they're all targeting that I, I, I'm wondering how would someone like Patty Jenkins uh, how would she do this movie you know yeah worth a try or, right or now or others worth a try right now <laughs> yep you know it's a different take different take you know yeah. since it's not hitting with the domestic audience here yeah all right, let's move along to number seven, Pirates of the Caribbean, Dead Men Tell No Tales. It pulled in about 5.2 million over the weekend, only about 41% drop off. Domestic take is 160 million. Mm-hmm. Uh, worldwide, it is at 677 million. Yeah, so worldwide is still uh, pulling them in, and it's doing good enough worldwide to warn more sequels. But I don't think they're going to budget it, you know, in the 200 million range anymore. Right. This one is at 230 yeah. million budget. Yeah. And uh, with these huge movies, right, there's various tax breaks and what have you. And Yeah. So again, <laughs> worldwide is doing a little bit better than, let's say, the money on a worldwide level and on a discipline. But the budget is also twice the size. So I guess it's disappointing domestically making it up uh, worldwide. Kind of along the lines of the mummy. Yeah, sure. But for pirates, right? This is the fifth movie yeah, already. Yeah, yeah, right. So, um, yeah, so for, you, you can for expect that, it's it to dip, better, right? Yeah. The mummy has no excuse. Yeah, the mummy has no excuse. Yeah. Other than it being not a, that good of a movie. Yeah. Right? So. And nobody anyway. cares. <laughs> right, right. You say they're doing a spin off next, right? Instead of um, a straight sequel? Uh, pirates of Korea. Or at least that's what they're planning? Yeah, I think they're planning uh, on spin offs. Yeah. It looks like everyone wants to turn their film franchise into a uh, a cinematic universe. <laughs> You're right, because it's a cash machine, right? Yeah. Okay. Uh, number eight, moving along, is uh, Rough Night, the comedy starring Scarlett Johansson. It only pulled in about 4.7 million in the second weekend. Uh, only about 17 million domestic so far. Uh, yeah, not making an impression. They're not going to lose money. You know, their budget is only 20 million, and they'll probably make it up. Uh, on home video. Yeah, nothing more to say about this other than that. Uh, I, you know, I don't know what they were thinking about. You know, it's pretty much the female version of very bad things. I'm not surprised that it's not hitting it off. Uh, let's move along to number nine, uh, Captain Underpants, the first epic movie. It pulled in about 4.3 million. Uh, drop off is about 40 percent. Domestic gross is uh, about uh, 66 million, and uh, worldwide it's only a little bit better at uh, 71 million. 
Yeah, it didn't open in that many territories overseas yet. But uh, at a budget of 38 million, this is a modest hit for DreamWorks. Yeah, considering it's by DreamWorks Animation, right? And uh, it only pulled in about only 66 million domestic. Uh, but somehow they were able to make this movie for 38 million. So yeah, it's not your typical uh, DreamWorks film where they do in 120 million. So this one, they know that the audience is kind of limited. Uh, so they, you know, they do in 38 million, and it's, it's a modest success. Yeah, yeah. Here's here's the, here's the thing. I don't get how how were they able to make this movie for only thirty eight million? I mean, you know, we know that animation costs a lot of money. Uh, I watched it. It has the same kind of feel as a uh, Nickelodeon's Jimmy Neutron. It, it's kind of like something you would see uh, that went direct to Netflix. There's not a, as much detail. It's, there's not a, a lot of texture in, in the animation. Uh, not a lot of detail. Um, it's similar to what you would see on TV, except a little bit more. That's how they were able to make it for 38 million. Okay, okay. You know, at first I'm thinking, you know, the only way they could, uh, you know, make this movie is they outsource it to North Korea. Oh. <laughs> this one guy, we are working on his computer <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah. All right. All right, let's round out the top 10 with uh, number 10, Guardians of the Galaxy Volume 2. It put in about 3 million over the weekend. Uh, in its eighth weekend already, uh, domestic gross is 380, and uh, worldwide it is at 851 million. Okay, so uh, that rounds up the top 10. Let's move on to uh, next week's film. So we have three wide releases. Uh, one is released on a Wednesday, uh, which is the Baby Driver. On Friday, we have Despicable Me 3 and the comedy The House. Yeah, let's start off with Despicable Me 3. So it is the third Despicable movie. It follows the very popular Minions movie. That movie opens higher than the first two Despicable Me movie. So what do you think? Illumination has been on a well. Well, here's the thing for me though. It's, it's that, uh, you know, with the Minions breaking out, it's the main storyline, so to speak, uh, necessary. I mean, sure, they can make more movies, but it seems like kind of a, like an afterthought right now to the yellow guys. Yeah, the, the yellow guys kind of became the, the draw now. They're the main draw, right? The, the main draw of the series. Yeah, but you know, the, the series has been doing progressively well. First one opened to 56 million, it grows 252 million domestically. The second one opened to nearly 84 million and it did 368 million. So it's not just the minions. The series is pretty well reported. They, they were pretty decently well reviewed. I think both of them were around the 75% range. And minions, despite opening at 160 million, domestically did 336 million, which is, you know, on par with the second Despicable Me. Uh, actually, the second Despicable Me did uh, about 30 million more. Second one opened to 100 million. This one could do maybe a little bit. I'll give it a little bit. I'll give it a slight bump. 110 million from the Minions movie. Right, right. And this one's also kind of fall within that a uh, weird Fourth of July holiday. Oh yeah, yeah, kind yeah. Kind of along that way. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it, it's on a Tuesday. Fourth of July is on a Tuesday. But during those days, people might might be traveling. Maybe. Uh, no, those days are usually pretty good days for um, for the box office. But this doesn't matter because it opens before that. So right, um, right. I'm thinking 110. You're thinking 110. Yeah, tough, tough to say because um, first movie 56. That, but that's well, yeah, the, the, the sec- first movie. Yeah, right? the second movie 83. But the second movie opened during Fourth of July weekend. Yeah, and then the the minions proved that it's a standalone movie with 115 million. Yeah. You know what? I'm gonna go even higher than you. You, I'm gonna do 120. Oh, 120, all right. a little bit higher. 120, yeah. a little bit higher, because Minions did 115. Yeah, you know, open to 115, and you know, this is kind of like the main series. You know, despite what I said about you know the main series not mattering anymore, but yeah. I, but you know, I think it is within this franchise. Yeah, and you know, there's more yellow guys. Yeah, right. <laughs> so 120. The review so far on RT is a. Uh... Not that, 78% with 18 reviews, which is kind of on par with the series. You know, if you include the Minions, this is the fourth film, and it's still holding up on a critical level. Uh, that's pretty impressive. Yeah, 110, you're 120, we're kind of in the same range, same ballpark. We're betting on this movie holding up well, uh, this series holding up well. Right. 
and you know not experiencing the fatigue we've seen with you know the Transformer movies, the uh, private movies, and even Cars Three. Yeah. <laughs> Well, this film's better regarded than any of those that you mentioned. Right, right, right. All right. What, okay. What we now, how about we to? move? Let's do the house. Let's move on to house. So it's a comedy starring Will Ferrell and Amy Poehler. You know about a couple who turn their house into a casino, uh, a gambling den, uh, if you will, and to so they can make money to send their kids off to college. Right. Will Ferrell, you know, he's kind of past his prime now. Well, actually, Daddy's Home did well. But Mark Robert, but Zoolander too didn't do too well. But that's not that's not just him. That's like that's more Ben Stiller. But that's also that movie, the first movie, not able to sequelize. Uh, waited too long, maybe. Right, right, right. It's a one-hit wonder. Yeah, it's still a decent draw. And we 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 haven't had any straight comedies, right? Live action straight comedies lately. Well, if you don't count Rough Night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So hey, it might be it might be good counter programming. The premise seems kind of so small, though, so limited. Well, it's a comedy, so it doesn't need to be huge, right? It doesn't need to be like The Hangover, where you know they travel all over the world, globe trotting, you know, whatever, yeah. right? So um, this movie feels kind of like Keeping Up with the Joneses, kind of sort of, except it's not as awkward. Yeah, and Keeping Up with the Joneses didn't do that well, right? Uh, no, no, no. Okay. But this movie does not. It's not like I say. It's not as awkward, right? Yeah. Keeping up with the Joneses is about a couple who, you know, normal couple who got pulled into the spy business. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> this one is like a, a normal couple, you know, opening a gambling den. Yeah. And, and, and all those things. And this is Will Phil and Amy Poehler. You no, know, they're the uh, pretty good. Well, Will Phil is obviously a consistent draw. Uh, in comedies and Amy Poehler can hold her own, especially those movies that she made with Tina Fey. So yeah, I'll give this like 25 million. No, well, I'm gonna go with you as well, 25 million. Good counter programming, but I feel like the premise isn't that strong though. It is not, but I think it might be enough just for people who want to go out and yeah, uh, get some laugh. laughs yeah i mean what else is out there you know there's transformers <laughs> <laughs> yeah right there's uh yeah there's no, there's no woman there's know. no like good you know uh live action comedies out there in theaters right now and will ferrell and amy Poehler are two people who you know you just want to sit around with and laugh right i yeah. mean you know they have a fan base you know they're uh, good counter programming but i the premise is kind of i think feel I don't feel it's that strong so if it was stronger i would go up higher that's why i'm leaving it at 25 million instead of 35 million right 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 so you know i'm, I'm with you there all right all right let's move on to baby driver it's a film that has a great buzz uh, in the uh, film festivals on rt it's uh at 100 percent with 47 reviews which is very impressive it kind of has you know that transporter sort of plot except uh, more edgier with uh, uh, with a bunch of uh, Oscar caliber actors and uh, the driver isn't Jason Statham uh, it's an autistic teen in, in movie terms it's probably a teen right yeah uh, sure maybe a dope <laughs> <laughs> yes yeah, so, yeah, um, he's, he's probably played by some 30 year old who yeah. just look like a teen yeah right right and the premise is kind of interesting, you know, some autistic kid who zones out when he's driving and that's what made him such a good driver and he transports things and then one of the deals went wrong and the uh, whole mobs uh, after him. Uh, yeah, you've seen this movie before, right? Uh, you know, it's one of those <clears throat> movies that they dust off from the shelf and uh, make a movie again. A driver who's on his last job, supposedly, you know, they pulled him in, all these criminals, you know, etc. Yeah. Except like like you said, it's played by all these Oscar but this one has, associated people. Yeah, this <laughs> it does have a you know kind of a unique spin on it. You know, the driver isn't Jason Statham, it's a young kid. Auto, you know, yeah, but it's has, the same old thing, it's the yeah, same old thing. Whereas autism. You know? At least they do in something slightly different. Um and then all these okay, side sure. all, yeah, all these side characters are really interesting. Uh you know, it's it's an, an ensemble cast. Uh you have Jimmy Fox. You have Kevin Spacey. There's definitely a certain draw to it. It's hard to say, you know, because none of these guys are huge draws and their star is kind of a not a, a household name. Uh, I mean, the side characters like Jimmy Fox and Kevin Spacey have a, more of a household name than, you know, the leading actor. Yeah, Ansel Elgort. 
You know, anyway, this movie is directed by Edgar Wright. His movies don't usually open well. Well, he's the uh, guy who he's the he, the original director of Ant-Man, but he was fired quarter of the way or you know while filming. Uh, yeah, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. But he might be known better as the director of Shaun of the Dead, Hot Fuzz, Scott Pilgrim vs. the World, The World's End. So kind of a um, all well, a all director's well director. Yeah, all well regarded, yeah. uh, well reviewed films. They were modestly successful. No, it is no. It, well, they, they yeah, they modestly, but the the movies only open you know in the three to ten million range, and you know it's kind of like still in the indie world kind of thing. Yeah, you know? they were. Yeah, that's why they're modest successes. <laughs> sure, but I I don't expect huge things from this I, I, either. Yeah, but they weren't like blockbusters. Like they were kind of you know right and you know be, like his movies are not kind of household names you know yeah his movie or more like um cult classics you yeah could say, right right yeah. within that range yeah but this one feels like it could uh it could do better you can you know uh, than than uh, his previous films um i don't think so okay so what what's your number i have to disagree with you there okay. i think it's gonna do uh five million three days or you know since it's opening on a wednesday and maybe seven million five days really yeah um uh, it's opening on a wednesday right i think it can do in the 20 million range three days and five days i think it can do 25 to 30 five days uh well you sure about that because yeah. like uh we have despicable me three you know sucking up all the money uh, yeah yeah a different demographic though but you know it's already doing 110 for you for despicable me three yeah and then you have the house doing 25 right right well i'm saying baby driver can do 23 days Right, 20, 20, yeah, you have 20 million there, you have 25 million for the house, that's already 45 million. Yeah. And, okay. Hey, there's room, if you have good movies, there's room. Yeah, you have good movies, but then you have Wonder Woman still, people are going to still check that out. I think Wonder Woman still going to hold out pretty well. Yeah. I think your 5 million is way, way too low. No, I, it's not low. It is within the expected Edgar Wright movies. <laughs> uh, this one's a bit different though. His other films won a hundred percent after forty-seven reviews. So okay. you know Go this ahead. this one uh, you know actually has a uh, there's a lot of buzz on it in the film festival. So it it's it feels like one of those films that that will break out. Um, but that's why I have to disagree. Yeah. So <laughs> we'll, see. But we'll see. We'll see though. We'll yeah. see. So uh, Baby Driver. We'll see if it can uh, break out uh, this weekend. Right. All right, that's it for this weekend. So uh, come back next week and we'll see how we did with uh, Baby or how Baby Driver will do. Uh, I don't have high hopes for it, but you said that, you know, this is the movie that that's going to thrust Edward Wright into the mainstream. He's going to direct Ant-Man 2 next, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're not going to fire him again. Uh, they, they fire anyone. <laughs> sure, sure. But this one, they're, they're not yeah. going to, you know, they're going to have second thoughts about it, right? Yeah, this, after, this, after this, they're going to be commercial. like, oh, crap, we, you know, Ant-Man could have made 300 million. <laughs> right, right, right. This movie is going to, they're going to make Marvel think they, they made the wrong choice there <laughs> in firing him. Yeah. Um, <laughs> okay. I, I think of the three movies, we all know how Despicable Me 3 will do, The House, we kind of know how that's going to do. is a uh, baby driver that, that uh, could, you know, could, uh, like, like I said, could break out or, you know, if it does the normal Echo White uh, numbers, then it'll be one of the, these cult classics again. But I'm thinking this one, because of the reviews on One Tomatoes, because of the buzz it's getting in the festivals, it's going to break out. Okay. All right. Something to look forward to. And then we have uh, Spider-Man Homecoming coming up next. Yeah, the final So week. it's going to be exciting. Yeah. All right. See you guys next week. <laughs>